We've just always felt like one thing prepares you for another in life. We are a restored marriage. We had been married for 14 years, uh, went through a tumultuous divorce, were apart for almost three years, and then through a whole lot of faith and a tremendous level of counseling, we remarried on our original anniversary day. And the phrase we use, we, we stole back what was stolen from us. I first met Lisa at her office for a chipped filling. Upon our initial examination, including our oral cancer screening, I noticed a little white spot on the side of her tongue. And I just, we decided to watch it for two weeks. She came back in for some additional work and a cleaning, and we noticed that the lesion that we found was still there. There were just two little spots on her tongue, nothing of any real concern, but certainly something he noticed and uh, said, let's look at these and uh, I'll have you come back in a couple weeks and we'll check them again. But I think she went and looked in the mirror in the either in the car right in the parking lot here. <laughs> she called in and canceled and said, this is nothing, don't worry about it. And then it was a couple of more weeks. Uh, she just all of a sudden had this terribly sharp pain happen in the side of her face, her mouth, and of course went back in. And from there, it was noticeably different and Dr. Phil said, let's go get this checked by somebody. So we were within a couple hours getting a biopsy. And before the biopsy was even taken, the guy had looked at it already says, I'm going to go ahead and take the biopsy, but here's what it probably is. Her biopsy came back as squamous cell carcinoma. Luckily, it seemed as if we cut it early enough to where she'd have successful treatment. At Moffitt, they went through the normal regimen of treatment for squamous cell carcinoma, which is surgery, radiation, chemo, and from all we could tell, it was successful. It would have been early 2016 after the first surgery. They went back into the base of her mouth. There was an area taken out. She had to relearn to speak because her tongue moved differently. Um, and then there was, of course, 35 or so radiation treatments and then seven chemotherapies. And she did seven weeks of that. And then six months later, there was a recurrence. And it had moved just enough to where it was going to necessitate the removal of her vocal cords. So, of course, that became a six-week panic attack, basically, where we, we knew for six weeks they were taking her voice away. Um, the voice of a woman who used to sing. I think it was pretty devastating to hear that for her, obviously. I don't know how someone takes news like that any other way, but we knew that it had to be done to save her life. The surgical day came and she was, uh, she was a soldier. It, it, I, of course, being the over protective husband was afraid of what those last moments were, but they were beautiful and they were graceful and she told us she loved us. And then she turned and she said, okay, I'm ready. And that was it. She entered into what would be the greatest battle of her life with so much poise, with so much character, so much strength. She, um, she inspires me. She knew what she was about to do and she was walking into it with a warrior spirit that she still has today. That surgery was slated for about 12 hours and about five hours into the surgery, someone taps me on the shoulder and it's our surgeon. Okay. <clears throat> so he basically sat us down, sat me down and said, it's, it's a little more widespread than we thought. So we're going to have to take her bottom left jaw. So, so they, <clears throat> they removed her vocal cords. They placed the stoma. She had already had a G tube in her stomach for feeding for a number of months by this point, because the swallowing had become far too painful. And then they removed her jaw bone from just to the left of center, almost up to the joint. And since then, it's been cancer-free, and every day is a beautiful day, and, and uh, we're living life like everybody else. We just live it a little differently now. 
I find our life to be very proportionate. Some people might look at our life and think it's terrible or tragic and look what you're going without. But I remind people, look what we're going with. And so the way I explain it, I says for every valley I think is delivered to you to walk through, an equal and proportionate peak awaits you. We're gonna beat the odds on this one. Now we're, we're in it for the long haul and we only get that chance because those guys were right on it. Moffat team all said high five. Hat tip to the doctor who found this. He saved your life and gave you a chance to fight. Most people do not detect this specific cancer early and if the Cravers had not caught this early I would not be alive today. Our spirits throughout everyone here is family and always will be. In the dentistry we have a material that flows in there really nicely, okay? Um, and it actually hardens and it's a little bit soft material. It's called um, those moments that, that a doctor takes to do the extra work to look for those little things and to be you know medically and academically curious about something like two little dots is a game changer it advanced everything else every other medical professional since has been able to do to help us you would think that this cancer took a piece of her but it did not take her way her joy her hope, her life, which all of those things is so strongly evident in her still. A lot of people can't overcome adversity, such as what Lisa has. And she is just an inspiration to all those who have gone through a similar battle and those facing all types of battles. I'm so proud of her, the way that she's fought this battle, the way that she's winning this battle. And I'm just very thankful that we were able to catch the cancer early to give her a chance to fight on to tell her story because it's a story of victory and it needs to be told.